The concept of a mind palace was made famous by Sherlock Holmes, though it was utilized for centuries before the legendary detective. So first off, what is a mind palace? A mind palace, originally referred to as the method of Loki, is a memory device used to commit a large amount of information to your memory by combining visual and spatial memory. Loki is the Latin word for places, and the ancient Greeks are actually credited for creating this method. In fact, when we say in the first place or in the second place, we're actually referring to references of the method of Loki. From those early days forward, this method has been utilized by champions of the mind to perform incredible feats of memorization, like memorizing pi to 100,000 digits. And while it may seem like an extraordinary feat to create a functional mind palace, it is quite achievable with a bit of practice. So first of all, how does it work? Here's a simple example to show you how a mind palace works. Let's say you're ready to go to your friend's house for a little get together. You head on over, but when you get there, you need to find a place to park. Now his block has a bunch of cars on it, so you have to park one block over. Then you walk into the house and you need to put your keys up, right? So you sit them on the coffee table in his living room. Well, as more people show up and time passes, you realize that it's getting a little warm. So you take your jacket off and you throw it over the chair. Well, the party ends and everyone had a great time, but it's now time to leave. How do you know where everything is? You know you need to leave with your jacket, your keys, and of course, your car. But why? It's because you came with them. They are permanent items to you. You're likely to take these almost anywhere that you travel. You immediately remember where your jacket is. It's over the chair. Then as you walk out, you see your keys, and you're reminded that you had to park a block down. Now the process of leaving that get-together is very similar to what you do in a mind palace. You see things that you know you need, like your coat, your keys, and your car, and they remind you of other things, in this case, where you put them. With that in mind, here are five simple steps to creating and using your very own functional mind palace, with the help of one of my YouTuber friends, Logan. Step number one, you need to decide on the map's location. The layout of your mind palace is crucial for it to function appropriately. While it is possible to completely construct your own layout from your imagination, it will take extra energy and a lot of extra time that you don't need to expend. The goal is to be so familiar with your palace's layout that you can run through it in your mind without even having to think much about it. In fact, humans have a memory system that is set up to be associative. This means that we store information based on what it is associated to. The technical term for this is elaborative encoding, and it's the specific way that we encode short-term information into long-term memory with a mind palace, and it works by connecting connecting one memory to pre-existing memories. Every memory has another memory attached to it, and the more attachment one memory has, the easier it is that it can be recalled. With this in mind, some of the best locations to start off with would be to use your house, your workplace, your school, or even a childhood park. The best possible location for your first mind palace is any space that you're very familiar with. I also want to say on a side note, with the relatively new inventions of video games, we actually have a new option available. Video game maps and locations can be utilized as mind palace layouts too. For example, the Zombies Theater map in Black Ops is forever seared in my mind after running so many circles. Once you have the palace's location established and thoroughly memorized, you're ready to begin the process of adding information. Since Logan has had a lot more practice with mind palaces, I'm going to let him explain the next few steps to you. Now, moving on to step number two, and that's to establish the main items. Now, assuming that you are able to walk through your palace in your mind without struggling to recall details, you are ready to start assigning permanent items. You should select four to five items in each room. Optimal items to select are furniture, artwork, windows, decorations, and other prominent features. Try to avoid selecting two of the same object in each room. For instance, if you have a dining room, don't use each individual chair as separate items. Instead, utilize the entire set as one item. This will prevent your brain from getting confused when you add information later. To give an example of what I mean, the first room of my mind palace, which is my living room, is filled with a rocking chair in the corner, a sofa next to that, then a tall standing lamp. There's also a love seat, a fireplace, a bookshelf, and some decorative wall art. This is a fairly detailed room with multiple items, but it's not too much to remember because the outline is already in my long-term memory. It also helps that the items are different enough that I don't have trouble differentiating them. Once you have this step down, you're ready for the next step in the process. That step, or step number three, is determining your route. This is the step that catches most people off guard. In short, you must order each item in your room and follow that order every single time you use your mind palace. When I first learned of the mind palace technique, I had an unrealistic concept of walking aimlessly through my palace and seeing things that I wanted to remember. While this seems interesting and is partially true, it negates how a mind palace truly functions. 
A mind palace's functionality lies largely in repetition and visual cues. So now that you have your mind palace memorized and the items within it selected, you have to establish a route that you will always take when recalling things. In other words, you must order your items. Some people find it easier to give a number to each item in their memory palace. For instance, I always enter through my front door and then I always turn right and work around my house in a counterclockwise motion. I work counterclockwise in every room as well until I finally make it back around to the beginning of the route. Once you have a route in your mind palace determined and know it better than the back of your hand, you are ready to start adding information. A simple way to know if you're ready is to quiz yourself. For instance, what's the third item in the second room. If you can think of it quickly without going through all of the rooms, you're ready. On to step number four, and that's adding information to the permanent items. This is the part that you were waiting for, actually adding information to your mind palace. Now that we have a mental model of the rooms memorized, you must associate something with each object in each room. Something to keep in mind while adding information is that the mind palace is a visual memory technique. So you have to convert whatever information that you want to memorize into a visual form. This means even if it's numbers, cards, test information, or a speech, you must turn it into visual information. There are a few techniques that have already been created to help you do this conversion, but many people do it with their own creativity. The first step in adding information is to convert it into an absurd, visually and sensory stimulating image. Bright colors, crazy textures, sounds, feelings, and movements help with this. After you've done this to your information, you can begin to place it throughout your mind palace along the route that you take. This is where the route begins to become a useful tool. Say you are memorizing a deck of cards, and the first card is an ace of hearts. Well, you would then take the image you have created for an ace of hearts and associate it with your first item in your first room. So for mine, the ace of hearts is represented by a monkey with a bright red bum going crazy. It sounds insane, but it's visual and memorable. The first spot in my mind palace is a small coat closet just to the right of the front door. With that in mind, I walk into my mind palace and I look inside that small closet to see a monkey with a bright red bum going crazy, the ace of hearts. Now, say your next card is a four of spades. Well, for me, a four of spades is a shiny black party cone hat on top of a shovel. A spade is another type of shovel. My next spot is the railing that separates the entryway from the living room. Considering this, after I see the monkey in the closet, I look just next to it and see a shiny black party hat set upon a shovel that is balanced precariously on the railing the four of spades. I would continue this until I have placed the entire deck of cards throughout my mind palace in the order in which I want to have them memorized. Then, when I want to recall them, I go back through my mind palace and I see the images on each spot. Those images act as a memory trigger for the card they represent. This process can be carried out with many forms of information. What makes the palace powerful is the repetition of the same location and route and the visual and sensory imagery. However, there is a concern that most people have in regards to the mind palace. What if you have added some information to your mind palace and when you try to add more information, your brain gets confused with the two different lists of things? Well, the answer to this is simple, but not easy. The answer is number five, to create more than one. Yes, the answer really is that simple. You are no doubt familiar with more than one location in the world. So yes, you can create more palaces. In fact, many memory champions will create multiple palaces for various commonly memorized topics. For example, one will be dedicated to cards, one for numbers, one for a list of things, and one for speeches. The difficulty for this is that you have to dedicate even more time and effort to create and memorize each palace. If you're thinking to yourself that this sounds like a lot of memory work, just to create the systems that are supposed to help you with your memory, you are definitely correct. This is why many people fail to actually use the memory palace effectively. They just haven't dedicated enough time towards it. However, with these five simple steps, you can now begin building and utilizing your mind palace. It does take a lot of work, and ease and speed will come with time, but memorizing more complex information will become easier as you learn more techniques for tethering more information. Now, as one final disclaimer, I want to let you know that the mind palace technique is not for everyone. There are many other techniques that you can utilize to improve your memory capacity and the effectiveness of it. If this technique doesn't work for you, there are many others that might be a better fit, but those techniques require other videos. As I end this video, I want to give a big thanks to Logan from Observe Entertainment. He wrote most of this script, and if you enjoyed it, I encourage you to go check out his channel where he has a ton of other mind palace videos. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.